The Kalam Cosmological Argument by William Lane Craig is a well-known and influential argument in the field of philosophy and theology. In this essay, I will provide a literary analysis of Craig's argument, examining its structure, key premises, and implications. Craig's argument can be summarized in the following syllogism. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. This argument draws heavily from the Islamic theological tradition, particularly the work of Muslim scholars such as Al-Kindi, Al-Farabi, and Al-Ghazali. It has been a subject of debate and discussion among philosophers and theologians for centuries. The first premise, everything that begins to exist has a cause, is a fundamental principle of causality. It is a principle that most people accept in their daily lives, and it forms the basis for much of our scientific and philosophical reasoning. Craig's argument rests on the assumption that this principle applies to the universe as a whole, not just to individual objects within the universe. However, some critics have questioned whether causality can be applied to the universe itself, arguing that it might be a special case. The second premise, the universe began to exist, is supported by both philosophical and scientific arguments. Philosophically, it is based on the idea that an actual infinite, an infinite regress of causes, is impossible. If the universe had no beginning, it would imply an infinite regress of causes, which Craig argues is not logically coherent. Scientifically, Craig points to the Big Bang theory, which is the prevailing cosmological model explaining the origin of the universe. According to this theory, the universe had a definite beginning, approximately 13.8 billion years ago. While the Big Bang theory is widely accepted in the scientific community, some philosophers have raised questions about the nature of the singularity at the beginning of the universe and whether it can be considered a true beginning. The conclusion of Craig's argument is that the universe has a cause, which he identifies as God. This is where the argument intersects with theistic beliefs. Craig argues that the cause of the universe must be uncaused, timeless, immaterial, and enormously powerful, all of which are attributes traditionally associated with God. This leads him to the conclusion that the cause of the universe is a personal, conscious being. Critics of the argument have raised several objections. Some have questioned the applicability of causality to the universe as a whole, suggesting that it may be a category mistake to treat the universe as an object with a cause. Others have challenged the first premise by pointing to examples of quantum events that seem to occur without a discernible cause at the quantum level. Additionally, some critics have argued that the attributes Craig ascribes to the cause of the universe are not necessarily unique to a theistic god and could be consistent with other metaphysical explanations. One of the strengths of Craig's argument is its simplicity and clarity. It presents a logical and easily understandable syllogism, making it accessible to a wide range of readers. However, its simplicity is also a weakness, as it relies on a limited set of premises that are subject to philosophical and scientific scrutiny. In terms of literary analysis, Craig's argument is structured in a clear and concise manner, with each premise logically following from the previous one. He provides philosophical and scientific support for his premises, making his argument appear well-reasoned and grounded in both traditional philosophical principles and contemporary cosmology. In conclusion, William Lane Craig's The Kalam Cosmological Argument is a widely discussed and debated argument that seeks to demonstrate the existence of a theistic God based on the origin of the universe. It is a straightforward argument with a clear structure, but it also faces challenges and objections from critics who question its premises and implications. As a literary analysis, it can be appreciated for its accessibility and the way it engages with both philosophical and scientific ideas. 
Whether one finds the argument persuasive or not, it remains a significant contribution to the ongoing dialogue between philosophy, science, and theology.